welcome to Chris Parkin Shooting Sports. This is the CZ457 at 1. I have reviewed all sorts of CZ457s. If you look on my channel, you'll see links to most of the videos I've made of them. I've done the synthetic, the carbon, the LRP, the MDT, the thumb hole, read on, you'll see them all. Um, they're all on my channel, Chris Parkin Shooting Sports, where you must obviously be now to be watching me here. So this is the At One. Um, what can I tell you about this gun? Right, you've seen it being shot. You'll see some of the groups on paper appear before and after I'm speaking now. Those are all shot at 50 meters. It is a fundamentally precise gun. It's very accurate. And those are shot actually in quite blustery conditions. So you will see those and the proof is, is in the seeing of them. Essentially, this is a heavy barrel rifle. It's 20 inches long, 525 millimeters, 22 millimeters in diameter, and the twist rate is a one in 16. Um, it's a laminated stock. Uh, it's a Boyd laminate stock, I believe, but it's got some modifications to it, which has brought it a little bit more advanced as how some of the Boyd rifles used to be. Heavy barrel, it's fully free floating and it's stiff. There's a stud on the fore end, so you can add a sling or, or a bipod like that. You get your usual CZ sticker there. And it says CZ for those who know, which I think is a fairly true factor because to be honest, I allegedly know, and I have to say, I have a massive confidence in CZ. They make some great rifles. Overall length is 938 to 982 millimeters. Overall weight is 3.5 kilograms. Length of pull is 313 to 360 millimeters and adjustable. Now, this is in two to rim fire. The 457 range, you can change mini, what they call barrel kits. So they can be changed, 17 HMR, 22 WMR, etc. You do have to take the rifle out of the stock to do it, but it's a case of a couple of Allen keys and you swap the kits over with the different magazines and spacers. This actually has a five round magazine supplied, but it's actually got a metal magazine, which is a little bit unusual. Most of the Caesars now seem to have arrived with plastic magazines, but they're both interchangeable. There's no real difference. Some people will prefer metal perhaps. If anything, the metal ones are a little bit heavier and they do drop out a little bit more easily under their own weight. But it's a single column, five round fits in there and you've got little holes on the side so you can see how many are in it. But it will also work with the 10 round sort of polymer mags, which are a bit more banana feed sort of out there. The barrel is 20 inches or 525 millimetres and it has a half inch by 20 thread for moderator or muzzle brake. It has a 1 in 16 twist rate. This one has a dovetail rail on it for scope mounts rather than a picatinny rail. Those can be added afterwards if you want to, but this is perhaps perceived as a more sporting variant or more mid-ground variant. This actually comes in at less than a thousand pounds, whereas the MDT, for example, is near a 1500. So there are some compromises made in the additional specifications as well as the stock types. Essentially, none of them are particularly more or less accurate than any others. This one also has the match chamber on it. And to be quite uh, fair, I shot them side by side for the last week over Christmas with some pretty horrible testing weather, which tested them both equally. And there isn't really a lot to pick between the two of them other than the fact of the physical you know, handling elements of the stock. This is a little bit longer than the MDT, for example. It gives you a little bit more stability front to rear. But of course, there's a lot in the handling elements too, in the fact that a wooden stock or a laminate stock like this is a little bit warmer to the touch. This has got the standard bolt knob on it, which is a steel bolt knob like that. You can get the additional big rubber knob which shoots over the top like a golf ball. Again, safety catch, two position, it doesn't lock the bolt. The bolt release catch is on the left side here. So if you want to pop that out, 
the bolt pops out. It might do it, might not for the cheek piece. Let's just move that. Bolt pops out, twin extractor claws, um, flat face firing pin, which hits the back of the breech as well as the actual rim of the case itself. So if you are dry firing, it's a little bit more of a, looks like it's a, a way of making firing pins last longer. But as I always say, I haven't broken a firing pin doing that. I just think it's a very clever design in the fact that CZ make that firing pin actually hit the back of the barrel, not just the rim of the chamber, which is where of course the rim fire works. Uh, essentially, otherwise that's just a locking bolt and usual goes in very quick operation 60 degree lift short enough stroke you can as i say change this to 17 hmr if you wanted to with a different barrel kit legalities notwithstanding It's a slim trigger blade, it's crisp and they are adjustable. So if you find the gun beds in a little bit when it's new or throughout its life, you can tweak it slightly and it's adjustable from 800 to 1500 grams pull weight as well. I find these triggers a massive step on from the 452, 455 triggers. CZ really have upped their game with this rifle entirely and I think it's a superb gun. The stock is, as you see it, a laminate version of the geometric familiarity of a sporting walnut stock from decades past, perhaps. A little bit more modern, it's a slightly more closed vertical pistol grip, but you can still shoot it either thumb up or thumb wrapped. There are some slightly uh, modern, more linear elements to the design. It's not truly sort of a, a round feel to it. You can feel slight edges and corners on it, but of course the laminate itself gives you a nice visual appeal to the stock and it's very, very stable. These do now have pillars in them to prevent compression when you tighten them into the stock and the action itself is held in on twin T25 torque screws front and rear there. So you get a solid fit without any kind of stress applied to the action from the stock, which would affect accuracy and precision. Moving backward, it's got QR anchor points for sling studs. So you can put your sling, or sling swivels rather, those will fit in there and you can use them either side as you prefer to carry it. There's also sling stud at the front for a bipod underneath and there's another one here at the rear so you can put another sling there. Now that is a slightly soft finish there so you can run that on the top of your hand or with a rear bag. But of most interest to some people, it's because it's got an adjustable cheek piece. You press the button there and the cheek piece will lift up and down as you desire. Again, it's quite an intelligent shape. It's not too, not too broad, so it fits under your cheekbone without displacing your jaw too much. Length of pull also adjusts similarly here. There's a push button on the side and that will allow the recoil pad to slide in and out to suit you exactly as you want it to be. The question I'm always asked is, which is the best CZ457? Essentially, they all use the same action. You can use the same interchangeable barrel system on any of them, and it's all down to which stock suits your budget and suits your handling and likely hunting or, or sport shooting, target shooting dynamics. 
MDT is obviously designed for precision rifle use. The LRP has got the biggest, heaviest, longest stock for the most precision capability for long range rimfire shooting. And I would agree with that completely. Because one thing about CZ, they do not bombard you with marketing hyperbole. What they say is what you get. It's not just bluff and bull. It is actually a real world opinion of what they think the rifle is suited to. And they do a pretty good job of getting that right. In years past, we might have called this a varmint or just a heavy barreled rifle because it's not fluted like the other two big guns are from the CZ457 range. But I don't think that detracts from it at all. Some people will like the more classical, sleek looks. You get a good finish on the stock and it's warm to hold. It's quite grippy as well. And there's plenty of width in the Beavertail 4 in here so you can grip onto it without your fingers touching the barrel. I've shot this rifle from all sorts of positions. I've shot it in PRS style, I've shot it sort of prone, I've shot it from the bench, I've shot it from tripod sticks. It works well from all of them. It's again, the shooter is always the weakest link. It's the way the shooter applies himself to the rifle and the actual tactile fit, the ergonomic fit of the stock. Will it suit your needs and requirements? If you look at the three rifles, the AT1, the LRP and the MDT, I like all three of them for slightly different reasons. I prefer the AT1 over the LRP because it's got similar stock geometry, but it's just that little bit lighter, a little bit more quickly adjustable, perhaps a little bit more crossover into the sporting arena. I like the MDT because it's very, very dynamic and you can add a lot of stability to it by adding weights. You can customise it, add accessories to all the m lot rails. I love the LRP because it is so super stable for testing scopes on and shooting rimfire and really pushing the capabilities of rimfire at distance, which I have personally massively enjoyed for the last year that I've owned and been using that rifle quite frequently. So none are better than the others, and I cannot say that in enough time, none are better than the others, but it's what suits your hunting desires and requirements or target shooting desires and requirements. So thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and comment on the videos if you want to comment on the videos. Don't forget to click the notification bell because my weekly uploads are proving very popular these days and it's nice if people can subscribe and make sure they're catching them so that the actual sponsors and people who supply rifles like this, I hope it gives you a better idea of how to focus on what you need for your hunting and shooting requirement. If you go all the way through to the end of the video, there is a link to the British Shooting Show for 2023. And if you click on the link, it'll take you to waiting by tickets. And this year, tickets also include car parking for the day or there. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.